Hey YouTube, it's Tyler here. Today I'm going to teach you how to use the basic speed formula to determine how fast a vehicle was traveling based off of the skid mark that was left on scene. This equation is only good for skid marks that go straight. If the skid mark goes to the right or left, turns, goes in a circle, this is not going to be the formula you're going to use. That'll be a different formula which I'll provide in a different video. So assuming that the skid mark on scene was left like this, and then here's your vehicle, what you're going to do is use this formula. So up here we have speed equals the square root of 30 times distance times force. Distance is simple. You're just going to measure from A to B. And for this um, example, let's say the distance is 120 feet right here. 120 feet. Sorry, I'm writing upside down. So this is 120 feet, right? So how do you determine what the force is? Well, the force or the drag factor of concrete is typically going to be between 0.40 and 0.65. And asphalt is going to be 0.45 to about 0.85. This is generally figured out by using what's called a drag sled. Look up what a drag sled is so this part will make more sense. But basically, it just tells you what the coefficient of friction is for that specific surface. So for the argument of this presentation, let's say the for, or the friction is 0.85. So all we're going to do is plug this in now. Speed equals the square root of 30 times distance, which is 120, and then times the friction, which is 0.85. We're going to multiply this together. You're going to get 30060, and then we're going to get the square root of that, and the square root of that is going to be 55.317. And that is going to be 55.317 miles an hour. That's simple. So the vehicle is roughly traveling 55.317 miles an hour prior to it colliding into another object. If you want to convert that speed into velocity, all you need to do is take your speed, multiply it by the velocity conversion of 1.467, and then you get 81.150 feet per second. Okay, so for this next part, Let's say the skid mark is no longer in a straight direction like I had in the other video. Let's say the skid mark goes into a curve just like this, right? Like somebody was drifting. Very often you're going to see that these skid marks have little um, sideways marks in them. I forget what they're specifically called, but that's basically when a vehicle is under steering and the tire's folding on itself. So you kind of get this little uh, etch into your skid mark. So how we're going to measure the speed somebody was traveling based off of the arc of the uh, skid mark is going to be done by taking your measurement from the beginning of the skid mark to the end. This actually could be done from even the, uh, about right here to here. Um, it doesn't matter. Just pick a length. Um, I personally like to measure the full length of the skid mark um, to give me a little bit more of an accurate reading per se. So let's say this um, from, from point A to point B was 120 feet. The midpoint of 120 feet is 60 feet. So at the 60 foot mark, we're going to draw this little line like I did right here, pretending that's going to be the center of the skid mark. And then we're going to measure from here to the top of the arc. And that's going to be a 7 foot difference. So now we're going to plug that into the formula. So the formula is going to be radius equals C stands for cord. Cord is going to be the measuring tape that you used. So in this case it's 120. So radius equals cord squared divided by 8. M stands for midpoint and midpoint is going to be the 7 feet right here because it's the midpoint between um, your measurement to the top of the arc. Plus the midpoint divided by 2. So now we have radius equals 120 feet, right, the length of the, um, the length of the entire skid mark, squared, divided by 8 times 7, which is the midpoint, plus 7 divided by 2. That gives us R equals 14,400 divided by 56 plus 3.50. And then break that down even more. Radius equals 257.142 plus 3.50. And then you get a total radius of 260.642. Now we're going to plug that radius, which is the radius of this entire skid mark, into the speed formula. The speed formula is a little bit different than the last speed formula I showed you. 
Uh, this one's specific to trying to figure out the radius of the arc. Okay, so this is only going to work for these type of skid marks. So now you're going to have speed equals the square root of 15 times radius times force. Then you're going to plug it in. Speed equals the square root of 15 times 260.642 times our um, friction, I'm sorry, not force, friction of 0 0.85. We're going to get 3,323.185, and then we finally get our speed. So the speed the vehicle was traveling to produce this type of arc was approximately 57 miles an hour, or 57.647 miles an hour. If you want to convert that into feet per second, you're just going to use the same formula as before. Take your speed times 1.467, and you get 84.568 feet per second that that vehicle was traveling. So there's one more thing I want to talk about. So let's take that 84.568 feet per second. Generally, the average human reaction time to anything is 1.5 seconds. That's three quarters of a second to recognize the threat or recognize what you might be running into, and then three quarters of a second to react to it. So that's one and a half seconds. So if you're speeding in your vehicle and you're going 57.647 miles an hour, it's going to take you a second and a half to recognize what you might hit, and that means you will have traveled 126.85 feet before being able to make a decision on how to maneuver around the object or vehicle that you may um, have almost collided into. So I hope this puts everything into perspective with speed. Um, people on freeway uh, speeding and slowing down fast enough uh, prior to hitting the back of someone's car um, lastly, before I end this video, the whole purpose of showing you the speed formula is to not only help you grow in your education with um, traffic collision diagrams, but more so recognize that it is critically important to recognize the speed you're traveling, the distance between yourself and another vehicle, and of course, always wear your seatbelt. Thanks for watching.